We're picking up right where we left off on the last video. Welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. This is our Ford Super Duty dump truck build where we're taking three junk trucks, one, two, little bit of three, and making one nice, nice dump truck for us to use. I've never done anything like this before, but I've always wanted to build my own truck, so we're doing it, and we're having a good time. Frustrating at times, but we're getting it. Let's just, let's go, let's get to work. So this is a 1994 Ford Super Duty. That was a 1990 Ford Super Duty, but the frames are the same, the axles are interchangeable. This is the Super Duty axle we're gonna be using over there. Looks like it's in pretty decent shape. It even has a proportional braking valve on it still with all the parts and pieces. Hopefully that thing actually works. Before we can get this axle and drive line over to that frame though, we're selling everything else on this truck to kind of help pay for the project as we go. That transmission's already sold, so I wanna get that transmission out. There's also quite a few parts on the interior that should cross over that I would like to get out and use as well, including this seat's actually in pretty decent shape compared to the other ones. I don't know what all we got. Floor mats. Oh, that's a nice aluminum hard hat. No way. This is like the best thing you can find in an old vehicle. Custom mix CDs? Are you kidding me? Oh, this is a Kevin Costner movie. That's a movie. The other thing is all the trim pieces like this, they all look good too. I don't have any of that for the other truck and it's the same interior color, so I <laughs> thought that we're matching. But I'm gonna go ahead and take all that off too and save it. I got most of the stuff I want out of the inside of the cab. There's a couple other odds and ends, but maybe we can finish the day with the odds and ends. Looks like they got some homemade insulation shoved in here. Then I want to get this carpet out. I'm hoping the little cover on this transmission tunnel is in decent shape because I don't have one of those. This has a ZF5 in it. It's a four speed with the overdrive basically. I've got a four speed for the 460. They made ZF5s for the 460s, but my understanding, and when I say my understanding, what Clint told me and another gentleman who uh, is up in the know on these Fords told me is to get a ZF5 behind a 460, it was a different style transmission housing than what's behind the 73, which makes sense. So we can't use it behind my truck. Go ahead and twist this knob off. Yeah, no, I heard it when I said it. It's what I'm doing though. I'd... So here's the one that came off my truck. They got a little bit different profiles. But I mean, the shifter's in the same spot. And that sticks up a little higher than that, so it's not like it's less clearance. And this one is solid all the way around, which I feel like, feel like that's a big plus. We'll take it off. If it doesn't work, we'll just have to figure something else out. I'm just careful, I can work my way around it maybe. There we go. Nice. So I need to get this drive shaft off next. Which means we'll probably have to drop that carrier bearing to do that. No worries, we got the wheels chalked for safety. I will also say this fuel tank 
is the nicest out of the three that I've got. 70 degrees in the last video. 30 today, that's something. Get off of there. That's fine. We'll just shove the needles back on the wall there. Come here. There she goes. All right, so we got a few other connections in. Uh, the parking brake here, this is the parking brake. It's like a drum brake inside of there. There we go. And we should be able to get that cable out like that. And while we're right here, we'll go ahead and do these cross member bolts. Oh. That slave cylinder out, it just pops. I don't even know where you guys are at anymore. I'm assuming in the spot I left you, I just kind of left you back there, didn't I? Oh, watch the PTO now. That is low to the face. So it looks like the starter runs through the bell housing, so we got to get that starter pulled off there too. Okay. Oh, watch it, door. Jeez. Three bolt design, but luckily they only put two in, so what a treat, huh? Does that not go through the bell housing? Yeah, I thought it did. Maybe it doesn't. Oh, I thought it went through the bell housing. I don't think it does. Oh, they tricked me. It does not. Okay. Oh, golly, that hurt. Jiggle the feet. It'll be fine. That's fine. That gives us a chance to get this starter out and test it anyway. One unnecessarily removed starter. Oh. Okay. So I kind of want to test this starter. The way these work, lug here goes up to the battery. This lug runs into the starter. This little fella here, the exciter wire, operates the solenoid on the inside that makes that connection. 14. We got 14 volts on her. Let's go up here. It's the actual, where you can see wire on the inside. Maybe this is our problem the whole time and we were working with it last time. Is there ground the issue? It grounds to the frame. There's not a ground lug. I think that's a bad starter. Here's an old crusty one. Well, that one actually spins up. It's a good lesson though. Just because it's new and shiny, looking, doesn't mean it's worth anything. That fellow wants to put his finger in there, but you know it's not going to be good. Those are called intrusive thoughts. We don't act on them. It's a new day. It's like 11 o'clock, and we got parts. Gotta get some stuff positioned down here. I don't have a transmission jack. We're just gonna have to use a regular jack. Transmission jacks are fairly inexpensive at the old Harbor Freight if a fella's interested. But I got a whole list of inexpensive tools I'm slowly collecting, and that's pretty low on the list. So. Cross member. We're gonna go ahead and take this off too. It'll just save us like four inches of fighting. Four inches might not sound like a lot, but it can really get in the way sometimes. The extensions take a lot of the impact out, but I bet it'll be okay. Yep.
think I got all the weight of it. It's just kind of hard to tell. The fella doesn't have an actual transmission jack. I think I'm balanced well though. I'm not saying it's gonna come down nice, but I, I think it'll it'll come down, you know. I don't think that's gonna be the problem. Ratchet straps are almost always the answer. So I got the ratchet strap under the bell housing and then going up through the top. So the front of this should be supported by the strap just in case I don't have the weight the way I need it. And I think we can get this thing disconnected all the way or slid back all the way. Then we'll figure something else out. You know, step by step. We're definitely off up here. That's good. Ratchet strap did a good job of keeping us stable. We're going to go down the rest of the way that the jack lets us go. I'm a little worried that PTO pump might not let us go down low enough. Not really a slow way to release this though. Yeah. That's about how that works. Okay. pump is definitely in the way I got a block under that side so we can kind of get the jack out of the way and then we can slide on the PTO net block hopefully here's the setup a lateral load ratchet strap made that up don't think it's a real thing but it is now and then we got the Vever come along on there and we're hooked up to the back of the transmission and we're just gonna try to very carefully slide and guide this thing on out I moved this strap back to the back we can kind of pick up on the back end as we go. Oh yeah. Thing. Looks like it with the legs. Uh -huh. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, if this parking brake will work on my transmission, on two. There we go. One, two, three. Yeah, I don't think that parking brake will work on the transmission I got. Confirmed, definitely does not fit on the back of that engine, and that's a one piece bell housing, so nothing to swap over there. And that parking brake will not work with the transmission I have. Oh, point in the wrong spot. That will not work with the transmission I have. So we'll still have to track that down, but we expect it to have to, so not a big deal. Got a bit of a battery situation over here, and of course, all my jump packs are dead because I'm just not very prepared for today. Make sure we're actually pumping in what we need to off the truck. We'll just let that cook for a little bit. I don't have enough amps off that battery to kick the backhoe over, but if we let her cook for a little bit, we should be okay. While we wait for that to charge, I say let's go ahead and get everything off of here. We're taking everything, the brackets, the axle, the proportional valve for the braking, the shocks, we're taking it all and we're rolling the whole package. I guess I don't have a 15 impact for my larger socket. Must have lost it at some point, that's fine. The weather is just favorable today. Nothing else holding that on, other than gravity and a bunch of spring tension, so that's terrifying. It's like the ratchet doesn't like being used as a breaker bar. That's weird. Well, we got those undone. Let's see if we got enough battery on the backhoe. Easy there, 
bud. Alright. One transmission ready to go. Throw a strap across that, keep her locked down to the pallet, but that thing's ready to hit the road. I would love to finish getting this axle out from underneath here and slid under that truck. So I ended up just zipping one bolt in right there on each side just to hold that bracket tight in place. I'm gonna take the proportional valve off next, get it disconnected from the frame. We'll knock those out. I think we have a whole lot to worry about there. And then we'll do the front brackets. If we undo this brake line connection right here. I'll take a good gander at them, but I plan on, I need brake lines and fuel lines, so hopefully I can get what I need out of this truck for that too. All right, that's separated from the frame at least. There's a vent right here that needs to come off. Weather is just not favorable in the shop today. Oh. Should be the last bolt on this one. And then just the two I got down there holding stuff steady for me. We're gonna try to get the backhoe up here. Try to get the backhoe up here, lift in the middle of the frame and take the 755 and roll her out the back. Easy on that drive shaft.
well the transmission's out and ready to go. The bed is ready to sell. I was going to hook it up to the backhoe, but I don't really want to run whatever fluid is in there through my machine. So we're just going to sell it as is. Axle is out, staged and ready to go over here. The rest of this is going to stay until that is in completion because I feel like we're going to need a few odds and ends here and there to finish everything up. So that's just going to hang tight for us. Looks like that transmission cross member is going to work okay. We might have to do some taller spacing for that tubing, but I don't really know the height of where the transmission needs to be. So I kind of got to get that figured out too. Next video, axle underneath. Then we can kind of figure out what we got to do with the drive line. Hopefully fuel tank mounted, fuel lines, some brake lines. Try to get everything on the bottom side done before we set the cab back on. Today is March 1st. Mid-March is the goal for this thing to be rolling and test it and use it. Thankfully, I didn't say what year. I'm going back over to the house. The wife's in an SOS. I guess the Easter stuff got left out and the kids are going to be home soon. So we got to get that put away before they see it. I can't thank you guys enough for watching and I hope I get to see you on the next one. Maybe a little sunshine too.